Hello to everyone who has just joined and thank you so much for making time to join us today. I'll start by introducing you to the three speakers we have today. So um, my, starting with myself, my name is Izzy Watkins. I am the Senior Programme Manager for Student Space at Student Minds. Uh, my role is to oversee the delivery of our Student Space website, which you'll learn more about in due course during this webinar. I'm also joined by two members of our wider programmes team here at Student Minds, Emily and Charlotte. Um, so would you both like to share a few words about yourselves, perhaps starting with yourself, Emily? Yeah. So I'm Emily Millard and I'm the Programme Officer for Training at Student Minds. And my role involves organising everything to do with training, getting people signed on, organising training events and also supporting our trainer network once they've completed their training. Thank you, Emily. And Charlotte. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm Charlotte Lee. I also work within Student Space as Programme Coordinator. So I support Izzy really with the day-to-day -day, um, running of Student Space. Um, I'm also currently helping out in sector improvement, which you will also learn about a little bit um, later on. Thank you, everyone. Um, so the purpose of today's webinar is to tell you all about the ways you can get involved in Uni Mental Health Day and especially how you can utilise the programmes Student Minds runs to complement your existing offering. I'm going to start with some more general information about Uni Mental Health Day, um, and then we'll move on to details about our programmes, uh, followed by time at the end for any questions. Um, there is a Q&A box towards the bottom of your, bottom of your screen, uh, so please do pop any and all questions in there, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Um, we'll start with a little bit of information regarding the what, when, how, why of Uni Mental Health Day. We recognise there are attendees today who may be familiar with the event and may have contributed in the past, um, but also attendees whom this is the first you've heard of the campaign. Um, but hopefully the information shared will be interesting and relevant to all of you, uh, no matter your prior experience. So Uni Mental Health Day is all about sparking a nationwide discussion about student mental health and making mental health a university-wide priority across the sector. Uni Mental Health Day is not just for wellbeing staff or support services staff to contribute to, it is a day for absolutely everyone who studies or works in the sector or supports students in one way or another. It's exactly three weeks away from today. Um, it's taking place on the 14th of March so this hopefully gives you a healthy chunk of time to reflect on this webinar and either devise some plans for the day or refine any existing plans you may already have. Um, now a little bit more about uh, history of the day. Uni Mental Health Day was created by ourselves at Student Minds as well as UMAN, the University Mental Health Advisors Network. We're both charities with a focus on mental health in the education sector and we both have resources to support you through University Mental Health Day and beyond. So please do check out our respective websites to view our full offerings after this webinar. So why is student mental health something we want to get the sector talking about? If you're attending this webinar today, it's probably fair to assume student mental health is already something that's important to you. You may already have an understanding of it. You may have your own lived experience or experience supporting students impacted by poor mental health. Our research and insights at Student Minds find that there are many factors to student life that can affect somebody's mental health, including academic pressures, money worries, and loneliness. And on top of that, year on year, more students are arriving at university with an existing mental health condition. At Student Minds, we believe no student should be held back by their mental health and that mental health should be a university-wide priority. By engaging with Uni Mental Health Day, you can help address existing gaps in knowledge and mental health literacy within your community and help more students gain awareness and appreciation for the support available to them. On to the fun part, which is how you can get involved. So every year, we are so excited to see the ideas you come up with, whether it be running your own campaign or activity. This is a great way to engage your community. It could be a stall, a mindful activity such as crafting or even a competition. What's helpful when devising ideas is considering the context of your own institution. What sort of event might be most attractive to your community? Are you a very sports orientated university and can you hone in on that? 
Are you very artsy with lots of students who respond well to arts based activities? It's really and it's really important to also consider um, how this may how you may use budget as well. Uh, you don't need to spend thousands of pounds to run a great event. Um, before joining Student Minds, I worked in a residence life service for a few years, and I actually found that some of our most successful events were the ones that didn't cost a lot to organise. Um, plus, Student Minds have provided lots of downloadable resources for you to use and spare you that time and potentially money as well that you may have gone into producing your own content. And these assets include postcards, posters, and my personal favourite, some bunting, which you can print out and decorate a space with. Um, next, outside of your own community or your own campus, you can attend one of the events taking place nationwide. You've already achieved this really, because you're attending this webinar, um, but on the day itself, on the 14th of March, you man are running a webinar entitled, When Does Anxiety Become a Problem? Um, there are details on how to sign up to this on the Uni Mental Health Day website, which we will share with you afterwards. Um, of course, Student Minds and UMAN are charities, so we do rely on donations to be able to keep doing the work we do. Um, so a great way to both get involved with the campaign, but also support the causes is to take part in or host a fundraising activity. You can come up with your own ideas, or if you'd rather take part in an existing idea, get involved in our Step Into Spring Challenge. Again, more details about that are on the website or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now to go directly to the Just Giving page. Um, and finally, engaging digitally is a big part of Uni Mental Health Day too. Um, scheduling some social media posts using hashtag Uni Mental Health Day um, and be sure to tag us as we love to see what you're doing as well. Um, within the Uni Mental Health Day website, there's also some social media assets for you to use across platforms, in addition to prompts to help you write about the day. Um, so if you are convinced to organise an activity or an event, um, please let us know. On our website, we list the events occurring across the country, and it's really, really special to see the impact of the campaign across the nations and celebrate one another doing good things. Um, so do head over to the website and complete the short form there um, to get your listing included and get yourself popped on our physical map. Um, there's also a showcase on the website of past events, which are a great source of inspiration as well. Talking specifically about fundraising for a moment, here are some of our top tips. Step one is to decide your fundraiser. There are some ideas to get you started on our Get Involved tab on the website. Um, these include bake sales, sponsored walks, quiz nights, um, but don't feel restricted by those suggestions. We love seeing people get creative and come up with new and innovative ways to fundraise. Um, the next step is to register your event through the website and create a Just Giving page. Again, there's another QR code on this slide, but we will provide these slides afterwards as well um, if you miss it this time around. Um, then we have plenty of resources on the website to help you publicize your event and spread the word. Um, in addition to those social media assets I already mentioned, um, there's already there's also email templates for you to use um, and an email signature you can download to show your network you're getting involved when you send them emails. Um, and finally, please share photos and videos of any fundraising events you do. You know, we love to celebrate your commitment and success and would love the chance to thank you for your support as well. Um, and of course, tag the stu student mind social media accounts um, and use that hashtag too. So colleagues across the nation and in sector um, can see the work you're doing and celebrate you as well. Um, if you are planning on fundraising during this campaign, but um, have any additional questions that we don't get around to answering today, um, please reach out to our lovely fundraising team at the email address on the screen, and they'll be very happy to support you. Um, which leads me nicely to social media. Um, so we encourage everyone to be loud and proud for Uni Mental Health Day and get posting on your channels. Um, of course, you can use the asset packs we've provided, but we also like to see what you can come up by yourself for social media campaigns, whether it be doing a TikTok interview with students on, or creating polls and quizzes to inform students about mental health and the support at your specific institution. Um, we really like to see um, places uh, use their own context and their sort of 
understanding of your own sort of students uh, to create your content. Um, something you can do for Uni Mental Health Day, but then keep beyond it, is a customised drink map with Cameron's coasters. Um, these are especially nice in campus pubs and campus cafes, um, and we have an existing design with some student space support information on it that you can specifically request, um, or you can get it custom for your support services, um, depending on where, where you're calling in from. And Uni Mental Health Day can be a step towards meaningful change. Whilst Uni Mental Health Day, the campaign, is one day, in real life, every day is Uni Mental Health Day. We hope those who engage with the day find it impactful, but we also hope it will spark further commitment to a whole uni approach to mental health. In a moment, we will go through our three programmes within Student Minds and how you can specifically utilise our offering to create meaningful change. But before that, here's a slide about staying informed. So you can sign up for UMAN membership if you have direct contact with students with mental health conditions, which I imagine is probably all of you. Um, you can also sign up to our newsletter at Student Minds. Uh, we have a newsletter for students and a newsletter for uni staff and anyone else with roles in the sector. Uh, this is a great way to stay informed about not just Student Minds updates, but also sector-wide learning, uh, new research and more. So now that I've given you all the background information to Uni Mental Health Day, I'd like to talk to you more about our programmes. So at Student Minds, we have three programmes that can complement the existing support, of, support offers that is provided by unis, HE institutions and other organisations that work with students. Uh, these programmes are our training programme, our sector improvement programme and our student space programme. Uh, so we'll now introduce you to each programme and provide some more information about how you can benefit from them, both on UD Mental Health Day and beyond. So up first is training. So over to you, Emily. Thanks, Izzy. Yeah, so one way that you can get involved with Student Minds work um, on Uni Mental Health Day and beyond is making a commitment to student wellbeing um, by looking into our mental health training for your staff. So we run two train the trainer courses for university staff, which train you up to deliver student workshops on your campus. So there's the look after your mate course and the mental health and sport course, both with different focuses. And the overall aim is to give students the skills to look out for their peers, friends or teammates and start conversations with them and be able to signpost them on to support. So our Train the Trainer course involves three modules, um, giving you a background on mental health at the universities, as well as helping you to develop your facilitation skills. Modules one and two take place online and can be worked through at your own pace, whereas module three is a live workshop shop which usually takes place on zoom or if you would like to get a group of staff trained then we can come to the university and deliver this in person um can we have the next slide please Izzy? so we also have an accommodation training program which is designed for any staff who work within university owned or private student accommodation regardless of their role as long as they're student facing they can get involved the course is specifically tailored to higher education and is based on the findings and recommendations our student living report, which you can read on our website. So within the training, we use case studies and scenarios that staff may encounter within their accommodation settings. And this gives them the opportunity to build the skills and knowledge to engage in conversations with students about mental health difficulties, but also signpost them onto the support. The accommodation training course can be run online or in person and is delivered across two or three modules to groups of staff within the same accommodation. So at Student Minds, we're very keen on measuring the impact of our training to make sure that it's meeting the needs of both students and staff. So some important stats that we've collated is that 94% of students who have attended either Look After Your Mate or Mental Health and Sport student workshops at their universities now feel confident in their skills to support a peer or teammate. And 97% of staff who have attended our accommodation training now feel confident in their skills to start conversations with their residents and signpost them to support services. We also gather testimonies from students, which demonstrates the impact of our student workshops. For example, a student at the University of Surrey told us that they found the workshop really beneficial to gain a clearer understanding of how to support their friends who are struggling. It was also useful to recap on places of support we can access if we need. I also enjoyed discussions, allowing people to open up 
about their experiences and stresses which I felt brought the group together. So that just goes to show that these student workshops can really have an impact on your students. Next slide, please. So how can you get involved with training on Uni Mental Health Day? Well, we have a large network of over 500 trainers running Look After Your Mate and Mental Health and Sport workshops across more than 120 different higher education institutions in the UK. So you could find out if your university are running workshops and promote these to students that you work with. Or if you're already a trainer, you could arrange to run a student workshop on the day to get students involved and start the conversation around mental health. You can also sign up to our train the trainer programmes or accommodation training if you want to train yourself up and join our network. Finally, we also have our student living report, which you can read um, as this formed the basis of our accommodation training, and it gives you a good insight into good practice in supporting student wellbeing within accommodation. Finally, if you'd like any more information, you can get in touch with us via the email on screen. Thank you very much, Emily. And um, to anybody um, attending, please do, if you've got any questions about um, the training programme or anything else mentioned thus far in the webinar, please do pop them in the Q&A as we will be coming to the Q&As um, at the end. And um, so I'm going to spend the next few minutes telling you about Student Space. So Student Space is a website launched by Student Minds in August 2020. Our original purpose was to support students through the coronavirus pandemic. Um, but as we've come out of the pandemic, the website has um, developed and now supports students more generally through the uncertainty of student life. Student Space is funded by the Office for Students and the Higher Education Funding Council for Wales. And we also receive some additional funding from the Charlie Watkins Foundation. Since 2020, we've had over half a million students access student space. And to the right of the screen, you can see a screenshot of the homepage. In regards to the website content, in regards to what the website consists of and what the support offering is, uh, there are three main ways that the platform supports students. Um, firstly, and most prominently, are our information, tools, and student stories. The website has tons of articles written by clinicians. Um, Co-production with students is really important to us at Student Space. So much of the content is devised from work with steering groups and other students. Um, and we also have a selection of videos on Student Space that, are that we title student stories um, that are created by students themselves, um, but always with the support of a clinician. So absolutely everything that goes onto our website must go through a clinical review. And we have a mixture of permanent packages, including ones on money, friendships, studying and managing your mental health, and some packages that are temporary and they, they rotate depending on the time of year. Uh, for example, we currently have our second term package on the website and it will swap to the final, final term package next. Um, next up is our dedicated support services. So we work with a variety of support providers who provide text, phone, email, and web chat support. We have some more generalized support options, such as with Shout, um, but also some tailored support for students from various minoritized backgrounds. These include the Muslim Youth Helpline and Taraki, who provide support to Punjabi students. These services aren't funded by Student Space at present, um, but we do have a sort of formal relationship with them all. Um, and finally, we have a directory where students can type in the name of their higher education institution and find a list of the support available to them at their specific place of study. And so here is a little bit more information about the directory, as I know it's usually an area of interest in these webinars. Um, so since its launch, over 90,000 students have used the directory to find out what support is available to them at their university. Regular feedback that we hear from students that I'm sure many of you have heard as well, is that students know that there is support available to them, but the sheer amount of information can be overwhelming. And especially when it's communicated in various different places on various different web pages. That's why a single web page on student space with a full list of current student services is so valuable. We include the likes of you know, counselling and mental health support, but also other support services, including residence life, chaplaincies, financial advice and more, because ultimately all of these services can impact a student's mental health. 
We are currently in the process of expanding and refreshing the directory, thanks to a generous grant from the Charlie Watkins Foundation. Until recently, we only covered English and Welsh institutions, um, but thanks to the Charlie Watkins Foundation, we have now begun adding Scottish and Northern Irish institutions to the website. As you can see from the lovely contribution from the University of Glasgow we have on the screen. And as a side note, we absolutely love the Glasgow entry. So big shout out if, if anyone from Glasgow is watching. Um, we want our entries to be accurate and we want universities to have control of what is written about them. Um, so the way we compile the entries is by contacting universities directly with a template for an appropriate member of staff to fill out. Um, every institution in the UK that provides higher education courses um, would have been contacted within the last few months requesting that you either create an entry or refresh your existing entry. Um, if you would like to inquire about um, the st status of your current entry, um, please contact us and we'll be very happy to help. Um, and a big part of our work within Student Space is monitoring our website metrics and learning from the behaviour of our users. So I thought you might be interested in a little insight about what students are engaging with right now. Um, this may reflect what you're seeing um, if you work with students. So the column to the left is our top 10 most viewed articles from January 2024. And then the column to the right is the last three months combined, so November to January. Uh, the arrows indicate when pieces ascend or descend the rankings compared to the previous month. And any piece, pieces with the blue dots are new entries that didn't feature the month prior. Um, as you can see, there are multiple money pieces at the top of the ranking, and we see this every month. I think the whole time I've been at Student Minds that um, how to find extra funding at university article has consistently been at that number one spot. I don't think anything else has um, overtaken it at any point. Um, and this does reflect you know, these sector insights we're seeing on how cost of living is affecting student mental health. Um, we've also seen an increase in students beginning to look at our graduation advice pieces, such as the grad jobs article. Uh, we also saw a lot of pieces in the temporary second term package show up, including second term blues and preparing to go back to university. Um, the loneliness articles tend to spike in the autumn term as well, and so we have seen that one feature too. So I hope that's an interesting insight into what we're seeing students engage with. And finally, this is how Student Space can complement your offering on Uni Mental Health Day. So a great place to start is ensuring your entry on the directory is up to date. Um, and if it's not, um, we do have a form to assist you in refreshing it. So do get in contact. Um, next is signposting students to Student Space on your web pages. Alongside that performing content, content metric that I showed you on the last slide, we monitor a lot of other metrics, one of which is our referral routes aka where students arrived at the website from. And an interesting insight for you all may be that we regularly see specific universities feature in our top five referral sites, which shows that their students really do value and trust their university suggestions. Um, so if you are convinced that student space would be a helpful resource for your students, uh, please do link to us from whether it be wellbeing pages or students union pages or anywhere else you think students would be seeking support from. Um, next, there are lots of assets you can download and print out for the Uni Mental Health Day website. Um, to the right of the screen is an example of one of the postcards, which refers to our loneliness um, and friendships uh, package on student space. Also encouraging lecturers to have a slide at the end of their lectures with a QR code to student space. Um, I was just in a meeting earlier today, actually, with um, a lecturer who does that and we have seen that uni that specific uni feature in our top five referral sites quite often so it does make an impact um, and finally talk to students about student space um, it's really important firstly to sort of know the boundaries student space is not a crisis service so if you have a really distressed student in front of you um, it wouldn't be the right place right then um, but for students whom it'd be helpful for them to devise their own support support toolkit and feel validated by the information and advice on the website, please do signpost them to us. I will hand over to Charlotte for a little bit about the charter. Thank you. So yeah, um, so the University Mental Health Charter is one of the programmes that Student Minds operates um, and the area of work is led by the sector improvement team. 
So the vision that Student Minds has that really underpins the whole of the University Mental Health Charter is for all universities to adopt a whole university approach to mental health and become places that promote the mental health and well-being of all members of the university community. And you may be asking yourself, why do universities need to take a whole university approach? And we'll go into this on the next slide. So mental health is impacted by almost everything we engage with, such as our surroundings, the activities we engage in, and the behaviours that we engage in, as well as our social connections. So to address and support mental health seriously within universities, we need to consider the physical, the social, the cultural and personal aspects of university life to improve it overall. Thinking holistically is fundamental as everything is interconnected. For example, staff well-being impacts student well-being and vice versa. Student well-being impacts how well they learn, etc. Therefore, we need to think about mental health holistically. We can't consider it as mental health being separate from learning or teaching, um, and it's not just an isolated experience. And this is why we encourage universities to really think about mental health as a whole university approach, rather than it just being, say, the counselling services responsibility or um, the mental health and wellbeing team's responsibility. Um, so to support universities to develop and improve their whole university approach, we actually offer three strands of work. Um, so the first one is the charter framework. This is an evidence informed framework um, which universities can use as a reference point um, on how to adopt a whole university approach. It's designed to be uh, an improvement tool and includes all aspects of university life um, and is separated into different domains, um, accommodation, workplace, learning, support. It is freely accessible and completely adaptable to your own institution's context. So if you haven't already, we would really encourage you to have a look at the framework um, to understand our approach and also start implementing it um, at the university. The second is our um, University Mental Health Charter Programme. So this builds off the framework and supports universities to share best practices um, and also improve their own approach. Um, we provide opportunities for universities to do this. So we run um, things called communities of practice, which are quarterly meetings to really look at specific parts of the framework in depth, um, as well as having in-person practice sharing events and online insight sharing events, um, really to just facilitate conversations between universities um, about various parts of the framework. Um, the programme is open to any degree awarding um, institution in the UK um, and we currently have 96 uh, universities signed up from across England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And finally and third is um, the University Mental Health Charter Award. So this is completely voluntary. Um, programme members don't have to go for this but um, some programme members do choose to. Um, and it is a way to encourage ongoing improvement by recognising and building your own evidence base of excellent practice. So universities develop an in-depth report about their own university's approach um, and the way it applies to the framework. An assessment team compiled of experts uh, then review this assessment and provide a detailed report to highlight areas of good practice within universities and also um, provide recommendations on further improvement. Um, like we said, it is completely voluntary um, and institutions um, are free to take it up um, when and if it suits their institution best. So how can you get involved? Um, one of the key things about University Mental Health Day is that it sparks important conversations about student mental health, um, not just on the day, but also going forward throughout the rest of the year. Um, and getting involved with the charter is maybe a way that you can can continue those conversations into future work. Um, so we really encourage you to check if your university is part of um, the programme. Um, you can do so um, by following the link online, which as we said, we'll send all this out afterwards. Um, if you're not part of the University Mental Health Charter Programme, then we would really recommend, um, you know, visiting our framework and then start using it. Um, 
you can you know begin considering how your institution approaches mental health and well-being um, through the lens of a whole university approach um, you can take a look at what you're already doing and also begin to identify areas where maybe your institution could improve um, some of our members utilize kind of a traffic like traffic like system for this um, but you know as we say a one size um, approach doesn't fit everybody so um, you are really free to customize it to your own institution um, secondly you know advocate for your institution to join the university mental health charter um, you know you can begin by looking at in other individuals who might be interested um, in supporting this work and really getting that buy-in from senior leadership um, and then thirdly, just be on the lookout for when our registration window next opens. So we will begin uh, registration uh, this year. So late, early, uh, late spring, early summer is when we're looking um, to open registration. If when you go away and take a look at the framework, you are interested um, in joining, there will be an opportunity to do so. Um, but if your institution is one of our current mental health charter programme members, then fantastic. Um, thank you for joining us on the journey. Um, we see the institutions who really engage with our programme um, have better assessment outcomes if they choose to go through the award process. Um, but regardless of whether you're going for the award or if you're just a programme member, and um, we really recommend engaging with us and engaging with the events that we put on. Um, so we have a couple coming up. Um, one planned in March and then some for the rest of the year. Um, it really just gives you a chance to kind of chat through the framework um, and make connections um, with other people in the sector. Um, you can join our communities of practice. Uh, again, these really focus on one of the domains um, within the framework and allows you to kind of share your best practices and also maybe areas where um, universities need a little bit of support um, and talk to other people in the sector. Um, and then thirdly, grow your programme network. Um, one of the main benefits that we see is um, building those connections um, and relationships with other people within the network and community. Um, you can reach out and share questions um, and learnings. Um, and on the next slide is just a few reflections from current members um, about the benefits that they found with um, joining the University Mental Health Charter. Um, so identifying um, elements for improvement, but also areas where they're actually already doing really great work um, and then maybe they just hadn't realised. Um, networking opportunities, um, working on shared practice, engaging with academics as champions um, and a new network of contacts as a result of events that we put on. Um, but like we said, you know, University Mental Health Day is, is one day, but we hope it really sparks conversations that you can continue to work towards um, throughout the year. Um, and that maybe joining the charter is one of the ways that you can kind of support your university to do that. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, the sector improvement team are always happy um, to answer them and their email is on the screen there. Um, but yeah, thank you find us online to stay up to date and also find you man online as well um and the last thing really to say is just thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us today and together we can make mental health a university-wide priority thank you all have a lovely afternoon thank you everybody